One other great thing that I need to mention about protocols is that this is the fourth video in my video series on the Swift programming language. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use protocols to achieve polymorphism and the difference between using protocols and superclasses. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new Swift command line project for this, but you can follow along using any system that has Swift installed on it. So as you probably already know, every real world application has some sort of set of animals, cars, and people objects. So we might as well create all of those objects for this application. I'm going to start with a person. And then let's create a cat. Okay, so I've got a person that can have a name and a cat, and I've got a cat that has a name. So let's create some instances of these. And now let's just print out their names. So this works in the exact way we'd expect it to. The person's names gets printed out and then the cat's name gets printed out. So what I want to do now is create an array of these objects and then loop through them and print out the name. I called the array things and then I'm looping through the things, so for thing and things, not a great name, but whatever. Uh, but I'm immediately getting a ton of errors here. And well, I mean, the first error is actually because I'm creating an array in Swift that has multiple types and Swift hates this. Swift wants me to have an array of a single type. So to get rid of the error, I mean, I have to say that it's an array of any type, but that's not really gonna help me because now it got rid of those, those top warnings. Oh, I need a comma. Got rid of those top warnings, but now Swift has no idea that my objects have names because how would it? They just anything, right? Uh, it doesn't know that anything has a name. So I need a, a way of saying that this array only contains things that have a name. And in a lot of object oriented languages, we achieve this using a superclass. So uh, if I have a cat and a person, I just create a single superclass that has a name and then we can use that in here instead of any and then we get something that works. So it's that hierarchy. So what could a person and a cat both be? And I mean, it's a little weird, but maybe they could both be like mammals, I guess, right? That's fine. So let's just do that. Let's say that these are both mammals. Is that how you spell mammal? I think that's how you spell mammal. All right. Okay. So they're both going to be mammals. So let's create a mammal class and we'll just put any code that is the same into mammal. And then we can have cat inherit from mammal and person. And then back in main, if I say that this array only contains mammals, now I can print the name. And this is, this is polymorphism. This is great. I now have an array of mammals, but I can populate that array with any subclass of that. And that's great because now when I loop through them, my code knows that they all have a name. But now let's say that I want to create a car class. So I'm going to create a new file called car, a new class called car. And cars have names. So in my main bit of code here, I have an array and this array contains objects that have a name. So I'm going to put a car in here. I'm going to give it a name. Let's call my car Frank. Uh, and okay, so I've got a person, a cat, and a car, and I just want to loop through them, and I just want to print out their names. And this is a very reasonable thing that I would want to do here. But it's saying it can't convert value car to expected element type mammal. Okay, yeah, because car doesn't subclass mammal. Um, so, all right, well, I guess I'm going to have to have car subclass mammal, and then I can get rid of this code. And now, yeah, if I run this, it succeeds, and there we go. So I've gotten my code working by having car subclass mammal. And this is a little odd, right? A, a car is not exactly a mammal and it could get even worse, right? So uh, I'm gonna keep this in the same file. Um, but what if I also had an automobile class that I don't know, maybe it has like a uh, number of wheels as an int, optional. Uh, and car actually needs to subclass automobile. Well, it can't subclass both things, 
but I need car to be an automobile and I need car to be able to have a name. So maybe I'll do something like this. Maybe automobile can actually be a, a mammal. Now a car gets its name from automobile, which gets it from mammal, um, which is weird, but hey, my, my code's working, right? This is, this is great. And th this might seem a little contrived um, because it is. Uh, we wouldn't have this type of stuff in a real application, but this does demonstrate issues that we have in real applications. When we're dealing with superclasses, we end up thinking in a kind of incorrect way where we create a superclass that doesn't quite do what we want it to do. And then we need behavior from that superclass in an unrelated class. So we end up subclassing in some crazy hierarchy and you end up with these crazy like master objects that everything subclass is from and they have all this behavior that no other object needs and it, it gets kind of messy. So for the sake of this argument, let's say subclassing is flawed, right? You can only have a single superclass, which means that if I need more behavior, I end up with a, with a weird hierarchy. It's a vertical hierarchy. So if I wanted to find how car gets its name, I have to go up through this stack of classes to see where that state or behavior might come from. And on top of all of that, I can't use structs with any of this because structs can't be subclasses or superclasses. So there's a lot of limitations here. And, and inheritance using uh, subclasses and superclasses like this is really powerful, but it's just not what we need most of the time. Uh, so instead, we can do this using a thing called a protocol. And I'll show you what that looks like and then I'll explain what I've done. Okay, so if I run the app, it's currently running the exact same way, but things are set up a lot differently now. So I should rename this to nameable.swift. Instead of having a mammal.swift with a mammal class, I have this thing called a protocol uh, that is called nameable. And basically a protocol is kind of like an interface. It just, it's a set of rules that every class or struct or even enum has to follow if they say they conform to this protocol. So the rule here, there's only one rule, uh, says that everything that conforms to this protocol must have a name, that name must be a string, and the only requirement is that you've got to be able to get the string. Um, so it could just be a computed property. You don't have to be able to set it as well. So this is the requirement, uh, which is perfect because it's describing exactly what I want. Back in main, I have an array of things that I want to be able to read the name of. So having a protocol called nameable and saying that I have an array of those things is, is exactly, it describes exactly what I want in this case. So I have a nameable protocol uh, and then my cat conforms to that nameable protocol and I've now changed it to a struct because I can. Um, and this has a name and that's all it needs. Uh, person, same thing. And car is still a class. It still has a superclass, but it also conforms to that protocol. So I can have a superclass and also conform to any number of protocols I want. So it's kind of like multiple inheritance, but only for these protocol things. Now the name it might seem a little bit weird here. I've called it nameable. Uh, this is one of the conventions in Swift when naming a protocol. So when a protocol describes what something is, you should use a noun the same way you would for a class. But when the protocol is just describing a capability, so in this case, just having a name, uh, you add able or ible or ing to the end of the name of the protocol, which uh, is a little weird, but you'll, you'll see this used and you'll get used to it a little bit. So this protocol just has a single property called name, uh, and we are only saying that we need to be able to get the name. But if we also need to be able to set the name, we would just add set in here. We can also add methods here. Let's say I have a, a function do something. Now everything that conforms to the nameable protocol would have to have a function called do something. Uh, and I go one step further and I can extend the protocol. And this allows me to actually add some default implementations uh, for functions or computer properties. So I can't store values in the protocol, but I can define some default behavior. So I could say that do something um, maybe actually just prints out uh, the name. And now this behavior is attached to everything that conforms to this protocol without that thing actually having to implement this, but they can implement and override this behavior. And this is, uh, again, kind of similar to having uh, a superclass, but much more powerful as an idea. So in here, I might as well actually use that function, do something. 
And then again, the, the output should be exactly the same. And Xcode's giving me fake error messages there. One other great thing that I need to mention about protocols is that here I've only demonstrated using them at the time that the class or struct is created, uh, which is how you have to do things with a superclass, right? You say, I have a person and it inherits from this thing. Um, but you can actually say that a struct or a class or an enum conforms to a protocol at a later time. You can make that decision much later, which means that you can have things conform to a protocol that you actually didn't create. So the Swift library has an array type, which is a struct that's already been created, already been implemented. But I can create an extension for the built-in array type, make it conform to my custom nameable protocol, uh, add a little bit of behavior in here. So let's just say that uh, name um, can just be uh, sunglasses emoji. So now if I call do something on array, so I got my, my entire things array here, if I call do something on the entire array, I'm now gonna see sunglasses emoji because the array itself now conforms to that nameable protocol. And again, Xcode has messed up here. This isn't actually an error, it's just Xcode being weird. And that's it for this video on protocols. The biggest takeaway here is that when you need to achieve polymorphism in Swift, you always reach for a protocol first instead of going for a superclass. If you have any questions, yeah. If you have any questions, leave me a comment and stay If you have any questions, leave me a comment and stay tuned for more videos on Swift and iOS development.